Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw. The 12th of January 1961. To Nibbana with stopping. According to Sayadaw, in the whole Sutta Pitaka, with the stopping method and realized Nibbana were only two persons, Bahia Darusariya and Ven. Malankya Pata. He gave his view on this stopping method in the following talk. Sayadaw himself was quite a well-known teacher in Abadhamma during his time. His view on the stopping method was also could be had some connections with his understanding of Abadhamma teaching. It was not only came from his understanding of the suttas, but also well experience in his own practice. He also taught his disciples to sit for samadhi. But in his many talks he didn't mention much about it. In this talk he himself supported the Mahasi Sayadaw's system as right practice. Closing square bracket. Visible form is the sense object, aramana. Seeing is the eyes. And the knowing is in the heart. Seeing the visible form and the knowing, these can't connect to the DA process. Knowing the visible form as white color, red color, etc. And can stop there is no fault for us. Hearing a sound and then know it. It is not a fault with the knowing of just hearing. After knowing, have pleasure in it, or disappointment. It becomes a fault if these things arise. For example, you are riding in a car and seeing trees and knowing it. It's not a fault. No kalesa comes into your mind. This is also a way to nibbana. Practice with smelling and knowing, eating, tasting, and knowing etc. There is no fault about them if you know only as sweet, sour, etc. You have fault if you disappoint with it. You feel the clothes. It's rough or coarse and I don't want to wear it and then it becomes fault. It's no fault only knowing its coarseness. It's also no fault if you can stop at thinking and knowing it. But now, you all are overpassing it, can't stop at just knowing. You are overpassing with greed, hatred, delusion, envy, conceit, etc. The Buddha said that if you could stop at just knowing and could reach Nibbana, then you'll ask there is no insight in the stopping, vipassana. Tana craving thinning out is vipassana. We are concerning of following behind with the unwholesome Dharma. This is called abandoning with knowing. This is for the contemplation during the daily life activities. At the sitting meditation, you have to contemplate impermanence. Sayadaw's suggestion here is very important for yogi's development and in accordance with the Satipatthana Sutta. This Dharma was taught to Bahia Darusariya by the Buddha, told the story of Bahia, including his past life at the time of the Kasapa Buddha's Sasana. People didn't have any right knowledge and took him as an arahant, during the time as a bark, cloth ascetic. They gave up their lives for the practice in their past lives, i.e., Bahia and his other six companion monks. You all also have to die. Therefore, you have to try hard for the realization. Bahia instantly became an arahant after listening to the Buddha's very short discourse. And it let the monks difficult to believe it. Can stop at just knowing and no kalesa arises is also a practice. If you can practice for no kalesas arise is a practice. Contemplate impermanence also make kalesas not arise. In the suttas, practicing with the stopping were only bahia and malankyapata. Some meditation centers are giving this instruction of seeing as just seeing, hearing and just hearing etc. At that time, Mahasi Sayadaw's Satipatthana meditation centers were teaching this method. Don't take it as wrong. Why I don't give you this meditation? Among you, no one can stop like them. 
i.e., Bahia and Malankiyapata did not refer to others. Therefore I ask you to contemplate the impermanence of whichever dharma you prefer, i.e., one of the four Satipatthana. You all can't stop at there only with the seeing. You can't stop, so I ask you to contemplate impermanence. It is not easy for you. If you can stop, it is all right and it is not right if you can't stop. Not the method is not right, but yourself is not right. During the Buddha 45 years of teaching with this stopping method and gained the realizations were only these two persons. All the others were practicing with impermanence. Impermanence is relating to the majority of people. So don't take it as wrong. You can do it if you can control your mind. They didn't include Anaka, Dukkha and Anatta. They could stop and Tana died away. Then, Sariputta and others developed their practices with impermanence. I'll explain you only on seeing. You see a form, black or white, and nothing is happening to you yet. If, it's a man or a woman with good looking and ugly come in. Then it's not only a form, visual object anymore. You all are deceiving by the later cognitive mind process. After the just knowing mind and follow behind with the later cognitive mind process. Normally you were taught with lies. I.e., with concepts in daily life, all of you not only can't stop, but also deceive by them. Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw, the 14th of January 1961. True Refuge. When someone is in drowning and the ship or the boat has already sunk. At that moment whom you have to rely on. You have to rely on yourself. Here you all are carrying away by Tanner water. Being asked by Tanner and busy with the family and business matters. You will reach to the four planes of misery if you're sinking there. By wasting your time with these things and you must sink in the Kalesa water. If you are looking at this house and that houses, all are carrying away by Kalesa water. Yet they have nothing to rely on. There is a Magan raft, path factors raft, to depend on. You even don't get the five Magunga if you don't contemplate, practice, still far away from the eight path factors. Someone is carrying away by water will end up in sinking. You will never appear again if you have sunk. Here yourself means the Magan, the path, the Dharma. You have to cross the water with your own Magan raft and will realize own Nibbana. You can't get it with Dana and Sila. It doesn't mean not to rely on him. Not enough. You must have your own Magan raft. Why I am urging you too much? Because you are now empty-handed. Every human business matter is carrying away in Tanner water. You are in loss with stupidity. You are sending here by Dharma. There are three types of Dharma. Wholesome, unwholesome and Magunga. Wholesome Dharma sends beings to blissful destinations, Sugati. Unwholesome Dharma sends beings to woeful destinations, Dugati. Path factors send beings to Nibbana. Therefore, beings are sending by Dharma to anywhere. Dharma is fixed order. Niyama. Fixed order means, after winter and summer comes. It's moving in accordance with the fixed order. Not by the wishes of human beings. This is the fixed order of temperature, Utuniyama. The fixed order of Kama, Kamaniyama means beings are taking rebirths in accordance with Kama. Nothing is with your own power. Therefore, you have to rely on the Dharma. After death beings have to go with the arrangements of Dharma. Human beings have differences are due to Dharma. All these things are fixed order of Dharma, Dharma, Niyama. What the Buddha said of Atahi Atananatho, 
rely on yourself, it didn't mean this body. He referred it to the Dharma. But you all are using it wrongly in society. Such as, I have to rely on myself. This body is not self. Anatta. Who owns it? I'll refer this to a story. Because I am worrying that you'll take the wrong refuge. Sayadaw told the story of Ven. Kamara Kasapa's mother in the Dharmapada, verse 161 indeed is one's own refuge. How can others be a refuge to one? With oneself thoroughly tamed, one can attain a refuge, which is so difficult to attain. When you're still alive contemplate impermanence. At the time of near death also contemplate impermanence. The cessation of impermanence is here and the path factors will lead to Nibbana. Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw, the 15th of January 1961. The Diseased Body. This body is never free from diseases. For example, wanting to stretch and bend the body, wanting to drink water, etc. Whatever you're doing and all are the appearing of diseases. Therefore, it has to be always in the state of conditioning and making adjustments for it. This Sankara Dukkha may be the biggest problem for human beings in their lives. With the Aryan eyes and observe will see the body as never free from diseases at any time, such as wanting to excrete, urinate are diseases. Changing postures are also disease. If it's free from diseases you don't need to make adjustments for it. Making for adjustments are diseases. Always torment and oppress with diseases that it is Dukkha Saka. The Buddha also said about the body as disease, Rogato. It always appears to the knowledge as suffering and you know the truth. This suffering arises and that suffering disappears. It goes on and on like this. With the candor exists and suffering never ends. In the worldlings, Padarjana, craving, Tana, follows behind suffering all the times. The three water roots of craving, clinging and action appear with them. In worldling every time disease arises and gets back disease again. It's the disease if the next candor arises. The worldling eyes and the Aryan eyes are a great different. With the Aryan eyes and it becomes Dukkha Saka and Magga Saka. If disease arises for him and it's cured. Therefore with the practice and it cures the disease. If not, if you have the disease and with the increasing of it. If you don't have any knowledge about it and diseases are increasing. Without vipassana is the increasing of disease. With the existing of the kanda and getting back the kanda is like having a disease and more diseases appear. It happens because not knowing the cause of ending the disease. Every time disease arises and knowing behind as Dukkha Saka. If you know the disease as disease and it's the task of ending disease. You have the Kanda and oppress by the Kanda. Nobody comes and oppressing you. At that time Dukkha Saka appears to you. Whatever arises from the Kanda and remember it as disease appears. You have to make this decision. The disease is Dukkha Saka and making decision is Magga Saka. Ending Dukkha is a wise person. Connecting Dukkha is a foolish person. Another way is, doing Vipassana is a wise person and not doing is a foolish person. It's very rare to find a person who can end the cause of disease. For Vipassana practice, no need to choose a place. Disease arises is Dukkha Saka, knowing is Magga Saka, the ending of the cause is Samadaya Saka and no more diseases arise is Nirodha Saka. I.e., the Four Noble Truth in Practice. Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw, the 16th of January 1961. Importance of Samadhi. 
Here Sayadaw gave a talk on the importance of samadhi for wisdom development. If we don't listen to many talks left behind by Sayadaw, sometimes we can misinterpret some of his teachings, samadhi is one of them. Sayadaw gave many talks on practice and talked extensively about it. He stayed in a cave for practice from 1942 to 1945 during the war periods. At that time the worldlings of the world killed each other as enemies. But Sayadaw killed his inner enemies, the Mara and its hordes. Defilements. A man may conquer a million men in battle, but who conquers himself is, indeed, the greatest of conquerors. After the war, he came out and started to teach mind development. Before the war he taught Abadhamma to monks and novices. Sometimes gave Abadhamma talks to lay people. From 1945 to 1953, the nine years of his talks were not recorded. In 1954 it was started to record his talks. Without the skill of recording and preserving most of the talks were damaged. Only in 1955 onwards recordings were successful. Once time, Sayadaw mentioned on the recording of Dharma talks to a lay man. He said to him, Mong Tun Tin, it's now with the development of science and sound can be recorded. It can lead to Nibbana if we know how to use it. But if we don't know how to use it and leading into the woks, hell cauldrons. Sayadaw's words were like a prediction on science and technology. We can see a lot of mind and environmental pollutions going on by misusing them. Closing square bracket. The Buddha said, Samadim Bikhave Bhavatha, let us develop Samadhi before. Samadhi means concentrate on an object and the mind not running away from it. It is not only on the Anapana practice, mindfulness of the breathing. You are looking at an object and concentrate on it. And you get Samadhi if the mind not running away to anywhere. If you don't have Samadhi, the intention is one place and the mind falls upon is at another place. Therefore we have to take samadhi first. People don't have any experience in the practice, just know the in and out breaths, when it is coming in and going out. For about 15, 20, 30 minutes, it can say as you have samadhi if the mind not going anywhere. In most of his talks to general audience, he asked him to establish samadhi for sometimes with the breathing. But for yogis came to his place for practice under his guidance, he asked him to establish strong enough samadhi for inside practice. Let the mind stays at the entrance of the tip of the nostril. Knowing the air comes in and goes out. This is knowing the in-breath and out-breath. Breathing in and out normally. If the mind not running away after 15, 20, 30 minutes, then you are overcome your mind. Why the Buddha taught us to do this? With the rope of sati and binds the wild bull of the mind. It is binding at the post of the air. You have to use this mind. If, it's running away and how can you use it? You can't use it for the contemplation of the impermanence. Having samadhi and what'll happen? Samadhi to yathabhutam pajanati. A person with samadhi, knows what's happening in the kanda rightly with knowledge. Knowing it clearly as there are impermanences in the kanda. Why we don't know it? Because you need samadhi. Not practicing samadhi and don't know what's happening in the kanda. Therefore you have to develop samadhi. Whatever happening in the kanda and you know all of them. Every time whatever arising you know all of them as mind, mental states, etc., e.g., the arising and passing away of form. You know how feeling is arising and passing away, in the kanda. So you know the impermanence of the five kanda. 
if still not discern Anaka, Dukkha and Anatta and should go back to Samadhi. Some people think if you are developing insight shouldn't go back to Samadhi. Re-establish Samadhi again. Give you an example. At midnight, even a small lizard falls from a ceiling and the sound is quite clear. Why is that? Because it's too quiet. You know a little itching. You also know a medium and a big itching. Mind of Loba and Dosa arise and you also know it because you have Samadhi. Why you can't see impermanence? Because you haven't Samadhi yet. First develop Samadhi, and after that using knowledge. Turn the mind at the entrance of the nostril towards the Kanda. It is becoming clear that after the Samadhi practice and to do the Panna. Let Samadhi to be number one, and Panna as number two. There are a lot of benefits if you have Samadhi. You know about yourself. Knowing the Anaka Kanda as Anaka Kanda is quite valuable. Seeing of everything with the eyes is visual form. With the seeing comes as pleasant and clinging in it will arise. After Kama arises and birth, aging and death, all of them will follow. Why is that? Because no Samadhi and not knowing about the arising and passing away of them. So these things are following us. It becomes clear that uncountable Dukkha are coming to us. If not coming now and it'll be after death, because the Sec 3 of DA process, i.e., Tana, Upadana and Kama right pointing arrow Jati, will follow. A person with Samadhi comes to Anaka, Maga, and Tana, Upadana and Kama cease to arise. Knowing rightly is Maga. Someone having no Samadhi sees only feeling, but don't know rightly as Anaka. So he follows with Tana, Upadana and Kama, and Samsara becomes long because he does not have Samadhi and Panna. It is not knowing rightly without Samadhi, and will be sent by Kama to rebirth. Arriving into the cow dung, it became a dung beetle. Queen Upari didn't understand this kind of dharma. She died and became a dung beetle. Kama sent her there because it was following with Tana, Upadana and Kama. Isn't frightening. Also mentioned about the monk Tissa became a louse and told the story of Queen Upari reborn as a dung beetle. Your affection to wife and children is like a dung beetle. After Queen Upari died and the king had strong attachment to her and couldn't discard the dead body. But the female dung beetle, i.e., Queen Upari, was very happy with her new partner, the male dung beetle. You don't know where you came from. Therefore, you are happy like a dung beetle. You are happy wherever you are. Even before death you are clinging to the nearest person. Not realization of the path everything can be happened. Without Tana, Upadana and Kama will not become dung beetle and louse. Except the path there is no other refuge. By developing Anaka, Maga and Supra, mundane knowledge arises. Don't think as I'll practice it later for the Dharma which ends Dukkha. You know that the wound will grow out. Shouldn't you do the thing which can prevent it? You rely on husband, money and wealth. This talk was to Dortin HLA, a lay woman. These things can't prevent you becoming a louse, a dung beetle and falls into hell. If you rely on them, and it means you want to cry and go to the woeful plane. Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw the 21st of January 1961. Craving and suffering. During the contemplation and you will see the impermanence of the arising Dharma. The arising Dharma is Dukkha Saka, by itself is without any knowledge. Also take the contemplative mind as Dukkha Saka, by itself is with knowledge. 
The contemplative mind is dukkha because of its impermanence. Therefore, impermanent dharma observes the impermanent dharma. This is dukkha dharma observes dukkha dharma. So, dukkha with knowledge, i.e., contemplative mind, can end dukkha of without knowledge, i.e., objects. Why is that? Because the DA process is cutting off. Dukkha Saka means, D-U-K, disgusting, ka, useless, Saka, truth, the truth of disgusting and useless. Therefore it's Dukkha Saka. What's the power of Dukkha? It's oppressing without any concern to the person with prayers for the candor. It's happening not with misfortune, but it appears by Tana. There are two kinds of oppression. Oppression with still having the body, i.e., the arising phenomenon, oppression with until the body disappears, i.e., the passing away of phenomenon. Only the body disappears that knowing the real dukkha, i.e., impermanent dukkha, there are two kinds of dukkha, dukkha with kanda not disappears and dukkha with kanda disappears. Dukkha with kanda disappears is the real dukkha. Put the kind of dukkha with the kanda not disappears in the marana dukkha, dukkha of death. Dukkha with kanda disappears is dukkha saka, the truth of dukkha. Marana dukkha supports the samatha practice. Dukkha saka supports vipassana practice. These are panati dukkha and paramata dukkha. Conceptual and ultimate dukkhas. Marana death is close to dukkha saka. It's easy to realize nibbana if you have strong perception of death. It's easy to discern dukkha saka for a person with strong marana, listening to saka dharma. Why is that? Because it's a decisive support, upanasaya pakayo to dukkha saka. You have few dukkha if you have few affection. Therefore before vipassana practice reflection on death, maranenasati has great benefit. Dukkha saka is oppressing more for someone with more craving, tana, samadaya. Someone with few craving has few dukkha. There are two kinds of oppression, bodily suffering and mental suffering, Kayika and Setasika Dukkhas. At first, it's torment with body suffering and then with mental suffering. The oppression is with their companions, such as 96 kinds of diseases, 25 kinds of dangers, etc. Wanting to change the bodily postures very often is bodily Dukkha. From impermanence to arrive at Dukkha Saka you must contemplate a lot. In this way will arrive to the end. Why? Impermanence is still at anaka, dukkha, and anatta. Still not yet arrived to the stage of oppression. In this way tana is becoming thinner, with more knowing and become thinner. Today I am talking about the differences between seeing anaka and saka. The differences are, kalesa is momentarily thinning, out and uprooting. Arriving at Kika Nana and the knowledge becomes sharp. Why? Because you know the oppressive nature. You will suffer like this if you have the Kanda, and then Kalesa thins out. Only arriving at Kata Nana and you will see Nibbana. Asking you to contemplate impermanence is for the developing of Kika Nana and Kata Nana respectively, i.e., to know Dukkha Saka and seeing the end of Dukkha Saka. At the time of seeing Anaka, Kalesa is not very thinning out yet. Only at the time of seeing Dukkha and Kalesa becomes very thin, at the time of seeing the oppressive nature. At the time of seeing Anaka, Dukkha is still bearable because it is seeing Dukkha momentarily. Kalesa dies out only by seeing the oppressive nature. You can see the developing of Dukkha Saka only by seeing Anaka. Knowing Saka is Saka Nana. Knowing the oppressive nature is Kika Nana.
with the maturity of Kika Nana and will arrive to the Kata Nana, the ending of Dukkha. These are the three knowledges. If Saka Nana becomes mature and will arrive to Kika Nana, seeing the impermanence of Dukkha is Saka Nana. After Kalesa thins out continue with the practice and the knowledge of not wanting arises. It becomes Kata Nana with its cessation. The teacher is wrong if he can't teach these stages. The disciple has not yet discerned that these three stages are also not Nibbana. How many kinds of Kika Nana? In the four meanings of Dukkha Saka. 1. Palanata, Palana Atha, oppressive nature, mind, body oppress and torment the person. It's the active part. 2. Sankatata, Sankata Atha, conditioning by Tana craving. It is the passive part. 3. Santapata, Santapa Atha, Kanda is always burning with Kalesa fire. 4. Viparinamata, Viparanama Atha, Kanda always has the changing nature. The builder of the Kanda is Tana. For example, Tana is like a manager, employer. And Kama is like an employee. So Kama is working for Tana. Who is the more fearful one? Therefore Tana is more fearful than Kama. Human beings are in the opposite and worshipping Tana. Tana is Sankarakanda. Even it arises and ceases, its power, energy, is leaving behind. Therefore the Buddha called it Tana the carpenter, the builder and not referred to Kama as such. Kama can't reject it as, I don't want to do it if Tana is still existing. So the Buddha used it as Tana Samadaya Saka and not Kama Samadaya Saka. In one of his talks, Sayadaw mentioned that the Bodhisattva's perfections were coming from the over four incalculable eons, Asinkaya Kappa of cultivation. Therefore, his kamic energy is also incalculable. The Buddha's power is one of the inconceivable. But after no more Tana and everything was finished for him. If he could come back again and again means still have Tana. With the cessation of Tana, Nibbana arises. Kama is naturally going with it if Tana ceases. Even though Tana arises and ceases, its energy is leaving behind. Therefore, beings suffer with its arrangements, gave the example of footballer and the ball. You're going along the direction sent by Tana without your wishes. Until Tana not dies, it'll never discard its power, gave another example of a tailor. Someone with latent Tana and it'll connect only Dukkha. Someone has a lot of inversion, Vipalasa, and think it as connection with happiness, Sukha. It'll never connect to Sukha, but only Dukkha. But we are talking about it as good Kama from death to connect with birth. After that comes Bhavanga Chita, life continuum mind. It's Dukkha Saka. Anantara Pakayo, proximity condition, the result is without delay, no intermediate stage. This is giving Dukkha without gap between them. Don't take the cause and effect connection, but as Dukkha connects to Dukkha. Tana is ordering Kama. Go and connect like this connect like this. There is not any good point in Kama. After birth with consciousness and Bhavanga Chitta, after that adverting mind, Avajana, arises. Tana connects the mind with proximity condition, Anantara Pakayo, without any gap. Therefore whatever mind arises only Dukkha Saka arises. Every mind arises and disappears. Put on the right thought glasses, Sama Sankapa on the right view eyes, Sama Dithi and will see clear. It is only Dukkha continues.
Therefore the nature of Tana is like a tailor having the power of conditioning. It's Sankata Dukkha Saka. It arises with the condition of Tana and Sankata Dharma. It controls the 31 realms of existence. Your thought on Tana is as an ordinary small thing. So, all worldlings do not take it seriously and they suffer. It connects with Dukkha and not Sukkha. Connection by impermanence and only impermanence arises. Eating is Dukkha, bathing is Dukkha, excreting and urinating is Dukkha, etc. Its power is going up to the worlds of Brahma gods. There is no other thing except this connection of Dukkha Saka. Therefore the Buddha said that I only taught Dukkha and the cessation of Dukkha. Sayadaw continued to talk about Tana with Kamasava and Bhavasava, taints of sensuality and becoming. Both of them are Tana. The differences are with the types of person who creates them, the one with big and the other with small Tanhas. Kamasava created the realms below the Brahma gods, and Bhavasava creates the worlds of the Brahma gods' worlds. From Sotapanna to Anagaman, they destroy Kamasava by stages, and Arahants destroy Bhavasava. Closing square bracket. Always reflect as all Dukkha come from Tana. During the observing don't reflect. What'll happen if you reflect? And it becomes Sintiyamana Nana and not Bhavanamaya Nana, reflection and observing. They are different. Don't be mixed up. What are the differences between Sintiyamana Nana and Bhavanamaya Nana? With Sintiyamana Nana more Bhavanga Cheetahs arise and in Bhavanamaya Nana less Bhavanga Cheetahs. Bhavanga Cheetahs take the objects of the past. Sintiyamana is thinking, planning, reflecting. Let a time for the reflection. And let a time for observing. In this way it becomes quicker in the practice. It's Sintiyamana to reflect on one's own candor with truths. Contemplation of impermanence is Bhavanamaya. With these two practices Kalesas not easily come in between the practice. What are the differences between less and more Bhavanga cheetahs? It is a Dukkha Patipada person, Prasitki with difficulties, with more Bhavanga cheetahs. It has connection with Kalesas. Contemplation without reflection and the realization is slow. How to use Sintiyamana and Bhavanamaya Nana? Sayadaw said Sintiyamana was helpful to stop Kalesas coming in during Vipassana. He encouraged yogis as before sitting should reflect Dukkha or the dangers of Tana, i.e., Sintiyamana and then sit for Bhavanamaya. More Bhavanga Chita means with more Kalesas or Dukkha Patipada person. Closing square bracket. Tana connects to Kama, to consciousness, to mind, body, etc. Except Magga Pakayo, path condition, everything is made and connected by Tana. Making it into a cycle and is called Oga floods. Without thoughts and Nana is not right including the bodhisattva and wise people were also using it. Tana is tormenting someone with the prayers for the kanda. Connection of dukkha without breaks is also tana. Vipassana is looking at the injuries afflicting by tana. It's oppressive and conditioned in different ways that dukkha saka. Let the conditions be. Do you want to be oppressed? We have to think about these two points. Oppressed means for the passive side. Accept everything to come. Oppressive means the active side. The mind oppresses the mind and form oppresses form. These are the two points of palanata, oppression. Sankatata, sankata atha. Knowing that it's happening according to one's desire, i.e., desire for the candor.